All right, then. Uh, it is now six o'clock, so uh, I think we will uh, start this uh, Committee of Adjustment meeting for uh, Thursday, July the 15th, and uh, we will go from there. Um, I am going to call the meeting to order and uh, ask the staff to start the recording, which I think they have. Uh, now, with this meeting, uh, calling the meeting order, I have a number of ground rules I want to lay out, and uh, I will read those off so everybody's aware, so just uh, bear with me. As a teleconference, uh, we need to ensure that everyone uses either handsets, earbuds, or mute buttons as they're on their speaker phones, as otherwise background noise becomes distracting and may make the meeting difficult. To maintain timelines around subsequent meetings, everyone needs to have dialed in prior to. The chair will announce each agenda item and introduce the staff to present the recommendations. When the chair calls for a question on a matter, it will, if you have a question or comment, please indicate by stating your name. The chair will record the request for speakers and will ask everyone else who has been missed once the list has been exhausted. Those presenting as a delegation will have 10 minutes to speak to the application on hand, uh, not past application associated applications. Staff will have a timer for 10 minutes and they will give the delegation a two minute warning prior to the ending of the 10 minutes. If the delegation per, uh, presentations are not focused on the application at hand, the chair may ask the delegation to focus the presentations. If a committee member would like to propose an amendment to a motion uh, moved or seconded or deferral, please indicate during the question comment period after the motion is on the table. When asked to vote on a motion, please indicate yes if you're in favor or no if you're not in favor of the motion on the floor. This will also help to check uh, that we have maintained quorum throughout the meeting. Uh, I will now turn it over to Kayla Delay, planner to provide the following comments. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 12th Committee of Adjustment meeting during the COVID-19 state of emergency pandemic. The purpose of this Committee of Adjustment meeting is to give consideration to minor variance and severance applications. Due to the constraints of the pandemic, rather than a traditional meeting in the council chambers, this virtual meeting will act as a statutory meeting for the Committee of Adjustment. Staff have posted the notice signs on June 30th, meeting the Planning Act requirements, and the meeting materials were posted on our website, along with a report which provides staff's professional planning opinion on each application. If the committee deems it appropriate, they will render a decision tonight and decisions of the Committee on Planning Act matters can be appealed to the local planning appeals tribunal once notice of the decision has been rendered. Uh, the planner will provide a quick overview uh, this evening of the planning application and they'll include any public input and provide their recommendation. The committee will have the opportunity to ask the planner questions on the application before they vote on the decision. On the uh, call this evening, we have the appropriate staff, myself, Kayla DeLay, uh, we have Amanda Wazinski, Ryan Cummins, and Shannon LaBelle to assist the committee. And that's it for me, and I'll turn it back over to the chair. Thank you, DeLay. Or, Kayla, sorry about that. Okay, uh, I will now call uh, each member to indicate if they're present. And if you are in attendance, please uh, answer. Harry Emmett? Here. Daniel Zuloff? Is Daniel there? Steve Schmidt? Here. John Vamus? Here. Uh, MJ Brown and Rebecca Smith are absent tonight. Uh, so that is where, is Daniel on the line yet? He's here, it looks like he's muted. Here. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, Thank yes, you. present. Okay. Uh, the second item on the agenda is approval of the agenda. Uh, 
uh, approval agenda, and I'm going to turn it over to Member Emmett. Moved by myself and seconded by Member Ziloff that the agenda for the County Apparent Committee of Adjustment meeting of July 15th, 2021 be approved. Is there any items that need to be added or, or made note of, of the uh, current agenda? If not, uh, would members please indicate if they're in favor of the motion? Member Emmett? Yes. Zuloff? Yes. Mamus? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Hamilton? Yes. Uh, that is uh, the uh, approval of the agenda has been carried. Uh, number three on the agenda is declaration of pecuniary interests. Uh, and uh, I want to uh, ask each member if there's, they want to declare uh, an interest that indicates uh, by stating their name. Hi, it's member Zuloff. Um, I've got a conflict with application A1721SL. That's uh, 19 Creedon Street. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? We will then move on to uh, the fourth uh, part of the agenda, adoption of minutes from the previous meeting. Uh, and I'm gonna turn this over to member Bamus. Are you there, John? Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Um, a resolution moved by myself and seconded by member Smith that the minutes from the County of Brant Committee of Adjustment meeting, June 17th, 2021, be approved. Could you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. yes. All right, uh, is there any any uh, members that have items to add to uh, to the uh, previous minutes or comments? If not, would you indicate in favor of the motion? Member Emmett? Yes. Member Zuloff? Yes. Member Bamus? Yes. Member Schmidt? Yes. Member Hamilton, yes. Uh, we uh, the the adoption of the minutes have been carried. Uh, just before I get uh, going, is, is does everybody hear me? I think my I cut in in and out. I'm not sure I've got the best connection here right now. If there is, let me know. All right. I can hear you fine. Good. All right. Uh, we're now going to go on to our our. Uh, different uh, hearings for tonight. And uh, the first one, uh, dash 61 CA 2149 application A 14-21AW. Uh, I will now turn it over to uh, Amanda uh, to make her presentation. Perfect. Let me just know if you can see my uh, presentation. Alyssa, can you see it? Yes, I can see it. Perfect, all right, thanks, John. All right, so thank you through the chair. An application for relief to the zoning bylaw has been received from J.H. Cahoon Engineering on behalf of Marty and T Tamara Burns. The subject lands are located on the north side of Linden Road and are rectangular in shape with an area of approximately 2,359 square meters and a frontage of approximately 36.3 meters. In regards to the proposal, the applicant is seeking variances for two structures, the attached garage and the detached garage. In regards to the attached garage, the applicant is proposing to remove the existing attached garage and rebuild it with an interior side yard setback of two meters, whereas four meters is required. I do note the existing attached garage has a setback of one meter, and the applicant is now proposing two meters, which brings it more aligned into the provisions of the zoning bylaw. And then in regards to the detached garage, the applicant is proposing two variances, one for the interior side yard and additional for the rear yard setback. In regards to the interior side yard, the applicant is proposing a setback of 1.8 meters, whereas three meters is required. 
And then in regards to the rear yard setback, the applicant is proposing a setback of 0.75 meters, whereas three meters is required. While I acknowledge the detached, sorry, while I acknowledge the detached garage structure is existing and the circumstances of how a variance was applied for is unusual, staff are to review the variance proposal as if it is not existing and whether or not it meets the te four tests of the Planning Act. And then in regards to the official plan, the subject lands are designated as agricultural. While the subject lands are not being actively farmed, lands designated as agricultural are permitted one residential dwelling unit, and also which also contemplates for residential accessory structures such as a detached garage. And then in regards to the zoning bylaw, the subject lands are also zoned as agricultural, which contemplates for limited residential uses. Uh, the applicant is seeking variances for the two structures, the attached garage and the detached garage. In regards to the attached garage, the applicant is proposing to remove the existing garage and rebuild it with an interior setback of two meters. And then in regards to the detached garage, the applicant is proposing the two variances, one for the interior side yard and an additional for the rear yard setback, specifically proposing, proposing 1.8 meters and 0 .5, 0 0.75 meters respectively, whereas three meters is required for both. And then in regards to my recommendation, I'm recommending approval of the application with the conditions noted in my report. The conditions in my report include recommendations from development engineering, which include redirecting downspouts as, and as is construction drawings and grading plans. And then through public circulation, one comment was received opposing the variance for the rear yard setback. And then it is my opinion, the proposed variance meets the proposed variances meet the four tests of the Planning Act, and I'm recommending approval, and I'm happy to answer any questions the committee members may have. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, now, is the, um, is the applicant or the agent present that wish to make any comments? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's Bob Phillips from Cahoon Engineering. I'm with Mr. Burns uh, regarding this application. Uh, as Amanda did a great presentation about the circumstances here, and I just kind of like to clarify them. Um, I believe there was an application in 2019 for a variance, uh, but due to construction errors, uh, they didn't meet the, the approved minor variance on this uh, property. As such, we are back here uh, requesting the variance to the as constructed location of the detached garage. Uh, we are also seeking permission uh, regarding the attached garage to the house, uh, increasing the current side yard from approximately a meter to, again, approximately two meters. Uh, we've read the planning staff report and support all the recommendations. In fact, uh, the recommendations with respect to diverting the, uh, the downspout away from the abutting property, uh, the owner has gone ahead and, and I'm gonna say 90% completed that work to direct the uh, runoff away. Um, and uh, we're seeking uh, the committee's approval. We're, we're both here to answer any questions you might have regarding this application. and. Uh, I think that's that completes my presentation. Thank you. Uh, any members have any questions currently uh, for the uh, applicant or staff at the present time? If not, I know there is a uh, a, a delegation here that what wishes to speak to this application. And uh, at this point, I would uh, ask them to uh, come forward and uh, make their presentation, uh, knowing that you have 10 minutes and we will give you a two minute uh, uh, notice before the ending of the 10 minutes. Hello there. Hello, go ahead. Nathan to Trisha. Uh, I'm Trisha Harriman uh, speaking on behalf of the Harriman family. We own the adjacent uh, property. Um, 
I believe a letter and photos has been submitted uh, with the points of our objections to the approval of this variance. Is that correct? Yes, yep. your submission has been circulated with everybody. Okay, so um, everyone's uh, essentially aware of the proximity from um, the detached garage to our existing property. And uh, the reasons that we object uh, to the approval of the variance and um, several of them have to do with setting uh, a precedence in the neighborhood for um, not following rules in terms of setbacks, which are laid out in the bylaws uh, for the very reason uh, to protect people's property when they don't have existing fence lines. Now we actually do have a living fence line. Uh, our property has been uh, damaged by the proximity of this structure. And um, it, it's our position that uh, this should not have happened since uh, the county was notified from day one of digging for this structure. So uh, we're not sure how um, this is going to be resolved, uh, but our position is such that he should not be approved this variance. Um, we've been here once already uh, stating the exact same reasons. Uh, so we're here to kind of just sort of uh, reaffirm our position uh, on this. And uh, uh, having read through the uh, four tests of approval for this structure, I don't believe uh, from my limited uh, knowledge and understanding of the county bylaws that it does um, meet all these tests, uh, including grading. Uh, it absolutely does not allow for a swale uh, to our property. It, it may uh, be uh, something that's resolved with uh, rerouting downspouts on the uh, other side neighbor, uh, but, it, but it doesn't uh, resolve the situation that's occurred and our trees, uh, which are our living fence, uh, essentially have been uh, irreparably damaged. And it's only a matter of time till we see uh, the effects of what that's gonna do to them. Um, so our feeling is such that if this were uh, an issue that was within the city limits, we wouldn't be here right now. This, this would not have gone on. And um, you know, it's, uh, it's a true saying that uh, good fences make good neighbors. And uh, you know, here we are with uh, kind of what's going on. So um, we feel that a lot of the uh, steps uh, have not been met by Marty. Uh, during his construction. I, I understand that he's blaming the construction folks, but it's my understanding that uh, when you put in a permit, that's a contract that you have with the county, and it was his obligation to uh, make sure every step of the way, uh, you know, obligations were met, including uh, all, all the inspections that were not met uh, uh, during the process, um, working under lockdown, using the excuse of the COVID, uh, you know, and basically taking advantage of the situation, uh, taking advantage of the, the county workers, uh, taking advantage of the lack of um, a consistent fence, I guess you could call it, uh, across the, our neighboring property. And uh, essentially, you know, this is uh, a situation that we would like to see uh, remedied in a way that uh, we can feel that we're getting some relief back from the county um, and, and backing us in this sort of situation because uh, it shouldn't be allowed to go on. And it's uh, setting a, a sort of a, a standard for everybody else to say, oh, blame the contractor and a mistake was made and we'll ask for forgiveness later. But that doesn't uh, fix the damage that was done to our trees. So, or our property. Yeah, uh, we, you know, we're not satisfied with the situation and we'd like to see it remedied by him not getting approval for this variance. Thank you for your, uh, your presentation. Now uh, I'll turn it over to the committee members uh, and see if they have any questions for uh, both the applicant, the staff or this delegation. So uh, please proceed by stating your name first and then asking a question. 
Perry Emmett here. Just a question to the uh, staff or the applicant. The driveway to get to the uh, detached garage in the rear, what is the road is to take? Thank you very much. Uh, the uh, proposal is to uh, drive through the existing garage, but there also is an arrangement with the neighbor to uh, allow for some uh, access through their property uh, to get to the rear uh, shop. Further question, will that be on title? I, the, uh, the idea right now is no, it's not on title. It's a neighborly uh, arrangement. Uh, no. You know, he will have access. He will have access through the uh, existing or the proposed, let's put it, uh, the attached garage uh, through. Um, but uh, he has been, uh, had some discussions with his neighbor regarding the long-term access. If the neighbor changes, though, will it still be there? Yeah. No. Very valid point. Um, uh, you know, it could get cut off by the neighbor uh, later on, and it would limit him to uh, through the existing garage. Uh, maybe a point for clarification to the applicant. So there's going to be two doors, one in the front after this old garage gets torn down and the new one put up. So it's an actual drive through. That's correct. Uh, second question I have to that. That's a very large door on that back shed. A pickup truck may make it through, but anything larger, how is it going to get there? Certainly, uh, you know, that he recognizes uh, that possibility that he can't get there. Um, right now, the, the, uh, the garage is for primarily storage of uh, small vehicles. Uh, but he did put the bigger door in that, no question. Had a travel trailer at the time. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from uh, the uh, committee? If not, I have one for the applicant. Uh, that I noticed the downspouts are at the back of the thing. Can the eave troughs be readjusted so all the water flows to the front? Uh, as I mentioned, the th thank you, Mr. For the uh, question, as I mentioned, the uh, uh, hopefully you can hear me. Um, the uh, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. Um, as I made mentioned in my presentation, uh, the owner has uh, already rerouted uh, the downspouts into a rain barrel. In he's 90% completed. He's just got to work on the uh, overflow from the rain barrel to direct the runoff, not towards the back property, but back onto his own property. Uh, a, a secondary question to that, uh, with, with the, uh, when they got the uh, building permit and everything else, there was a site plan for, uh, drainage and everything else, uh, at which point uh, in the swale, uh, I'm still trying to understand at less than two feet how you build a swale area. The rain barrels work. I have rain barrels at my place, but they're full when we had a couple of those heavy downpours. And yes, they did overflow. Uh, so I'm just trying to figure out if that situation happens, how does the swale pick up anything without encroaching on the uh, neighbor's property? Yeah, the uh, at the rear of this, if I understand correctly, it's a, it's a gable end at the back. Um, so the, there's there's no water coming from the building that's going to shed off the back. Um, 
the uh, I'm trying to describe this the the downspout in that one corner has been redirected into a thousand gallon uh, rain barrel and uh, it'll be directed along the side swale which which may have to be constructed that's that's one of the conditions of this uh, approval and, and we're certainly fine with it thank you any other questions from the uh, uh, from the uh, members on this on this application If not, um, I would uh, like to uh, ask for a recommendation as to what uh, everybody feels should be done and put a motion forward so that we can uh, vote on this application, please. Are we able to separate the motions, one in regard to the accessory structure and another one in regard to the attached garage? If you want to put a motion on to uh, separate uh, the two, that would be, uh, I believe, okay, but we'll ask staff uh, for what their, their uh, if that is okay, if we go ahead and do that. Uh, Member Zula. Uh, thank you to the chair. Should the committee see fit if they would like to do two separate motions, one for the attached garage and then one for the detached garage, that would be appropriate as long as both structures are captured in a motion. Does that help everybody uh, to, uh, as, an, uh, as a different option, instead of voting on both, uh, we separate? And if so, we would need to have a motion put forward. Uh, for that uh, to be to be looked at. To the chair, just for clarification, so will we be voting twice on two different motions? Uh, through the chair, that's correct. You'd be voting on a motion for the attached structure and then a separate motion for the detached structure, structure should the committee see fit. All right, uh, with that, looking for a motion of some sort to uh, continue on with this application, please. Just one other question. Um, the recommendations that um, have come forth on both of these, how do we separate those? Because they probably deal with two buildings. Um, so I'm just wondering as far as voting separately that way, what that'll do as far as the recommendations. Uh, thank you to the chair. The comments provided by uh, Field Services, they did separate their recommendations in regards to the uh, detached garage and the attached garage. Um, it's my understanding that the majority of the comments provided by uh, development engineering were in regards to um, the detached structure and not the attached. But prior to finalizing the decision, we can confirm with that department what the appropriate uh, comments are. And then um, in regards to uh, the other conditions or the other comments provided by Energy Plus, for example, um, those are general comments that apply to the whole property. Thank you. All right, I am looking for a uh, motion to be put on uh, so that we can uh, discuss further or uh, make a vote, please. I'll make a motion that uh, for the detached garage, which is the rear one, I believe, um, that um, 
the motion to approve with uh, all the recommendations in place. All right, uh, that, that the motion. And what about the, uh, for the attached garage you're talking about, Steve? Um, that I was making the motion on the detached garage at this point. I did not make a motion on the attached garage. Okay. Uh, I just want to check with Alicia. Do we have to make the motion first to split Alicia before we make a motion on each uh, building attached and detached? Or Amanda, please. Guidance. Uh, thank you to the chair. I would suggest making a motion to separate the two recommendations prior to making a formal uh, motion on the two structures. Okay, I will make a motion then um, to uh, split uh, both requests um, so that they are separate motions. Can I have a seconder for that, please? I will, Harry. You got that? Pardon me, uh, you need, sorry about that. Uh, now that uh, we've got that, I would like to uh, put the uh, that motion of, of splitting the two uh, structures uh, forward that uh, uh, Member Schmidt put forward and seconded by Member Emmett uh, to the vote. Uh, those in favor, Mr. Emmett? Yes. Mr. Zuloff? Yes. Mr. Vamus? No. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Hamilton? Yes. That motion is carried in order to split the two uh, things. Now I need to uh, go ahead and have a motion for both the uh, one for the detached and also one for the attached garage uh, for the minor variances, please. Member Schmidt, you had put one forward earlier before that. We split it. Uh, are you still good to put that forward or not? Yes, I am. Sorry. All right. Uh, and that was for the detached one to be followed with the uh, all the written recommendations. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. And I need a seconder to that motion, please. If someone isn't willing to second that motion, are they willing to put another motion forward and let this die because it doesn't have a seconder? Okay, Member Zuloff, um, I move that um, application A1421 AW um, in regard to the detached garage be denied. Do I have a seconder for that motion? Member Bamus. Okay, so we now have a motion to deny the detached garage. I will put that to uh, uh, the vote. Uh, or is there any, qu any additional questions anybody has? If not, uh, please indicate if you're in favor of the uh, motion, Mr. Emmett. Yes, to defeat. Mr. Zuloff. Mr. Zuloff. Yes. Mr. Vamus. Yes. Mr. Schmidt. Yes. Hamilton. Yes. So that motion is carried that we will not fulfill the uh, one for the detached garage. 
Is that, did you want to read that back, uh, Alyssa, just to make sure that we're all in a, understanding what we agreed to, please? I have that we will be splitting the motion into two, we'll be splitting the application into two separate motions. Uh, the first motion that has been denied is that application A1421 AW that the detached garage be denied. Thank you. Now we have to do- Sorry, that through, through the chair, I would just ask that uh, for the decision that you could just uh, explain the reason for the refusal, uh, just have that wording in our decision is important. Thank you, Kayla. Yes, uh, so Mr. Zuloff, uh, can you give uh, uh, an indication as to why we uh, turn that down or any other member, please? Um, I can give a reason that I don't believe it's minor in nature, as it's much smaller than the minimum recommendations of the county. Um, and it was recommended to be refused by field services giving um, grant issues. Thank you. Did you get that, Kayla? Hey, thank you very much. Thank you. And did you get that, Alicia? I got that. It was great. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Now we need to go on to the uh, attached uh, garage and uh, the minor variance that was requested for it. Would somebody like to put a motion forward, please? Uh, Member Zuloff, uh, I move that the application 81421AW um, in regard to the attached garage uh, be approved as outlined in staff report. Thank you, Member Zuloff. I need a seconder for that motion. Seconded by Member Vamus. Thank you, Member Vamus. Without any further, I will now uh, put. Uh, put it to uh, the motion to everyone for that. Uh, Member Emmett? No. Uh, Member Zuloff? Yes. Member Vamus? Yes. Member Schmidt? Yes. Member Hamilton? Yes. That uh, motion has been passed for the minor variance of the attached garage. That is uh, the ending of the first uh, application. Uh, we will now go forward to the uh, second application on the books, uh, CA 21-55, uh, application A1621SL. And uh, I will now turn it over uh, to the staff. Thank you. Um, through you, uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Good evening, committee members and members of the public. Um, this is a minor variance for lands located at 1360 Sawmill Road within the former township of Onondaga. The minor variance is for a decreased side yard setback of 1.21 meters on the west side, whereas three meters is permitted. This will facilitate the construction of a pole barn and allow it to be located slightly further away from the dwelling. The subject lands are located on the south side of Sawmill Road. To the north and west of the subject property, there is low density single detached residential dwellings and agricultural lands. To the south and east of the subject property, there are agricultural lands. The application is consistent with the provincial policy statement and the growth plan for the Greater Golden Horseshoe. The subject lands are designated as agriculture within the County of Grant official plan. The minor variance is in conformity with the County of Grant official plan for the following reasons. The agricultural designation contemplates for development if they have access to adequate services for the use proposed, if the development is sympathetic to its surroundings, and if the development is accessory to a permitted use within the specified designation. The subject lands are zoned as agriculture within the County of Grant zoning bylaw. The application uh, is seeking relief from section 4.4 in order to permit a decreased interior side yard setback. The proposal is considered to be in keeping with the intent of the County of Grant zoning bylaw as all other development criteria has been met. 
No public comments were received for this application and staff are supportive of the minor variance application as it is consistent with the provincial policy statement, conforms to the growth plan for the Greater Golden Horseshoe and meets the four tests as established by section 45.1 of the Planning Act. The minor, variance considered, the minor variance is considered to be minor in nature, appropriate and desirable for the development of the subject lands and the request is in keeping with the general intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw and official plan. Staff is recommending approval of the minor variance application subject to the attached conditions. Thank you. Uh, is the applicant or agent present? And uh, would they like to make any additional comments? Uh, yes, Chair. Uh, my name is Chris Bales. Um, I am very happy with uh, Shannon's presentation and I have no current comments. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, any questions uh, from the uh, members uh, for this application? Member Emmett here, just to staff or to the proponent, uh, the purpose of this pole building is to be used for livestock or? No, sir, dry storage. Dry storage? Yes. And it's right at the end of the house, I believe, is it? Yes, sir. It's gonna be replacing existing uh, small structure. Okay. We didn't receive that in the package, so I'm just trying to figure that out. I'm sorry, it's uh, it's written on the site plan, sir. That didn't come to the members, I don't believe. Oh, I apologize. This is my first application. Yeah, no, it, 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 I don't think it's your fault. I think it should have come from staff, but uh, we have to, we'll talk to staff about that. Thank you. Any other comments or questions to the uh, applicant or, or staff? If not, uh, I'm going to uh, turn it over to uh, mem member Zuloff for recommendations. Moved by myself and seconded by member Bamus that application A1621 SL from Chris Bales on behalf of uh, Patricia Van Brake owner of the lands located at 1360 Sawmill Road be approved as outlined in staff report CA 2155. Thank you, member Zuloff. Now I'll put it to the vote. Uh, those uh, in favor uh, or whatever, member Emmett? Yes. Member Zuloff? Yes. Member Vamus? Yes, yes. <clears throat> member Schmidt? Yes. Member Hamilton, yes. Uh, the motion has been carried. Uh, your application has been granted. Thank you very much for your time. All right, we're going to move on to 6-3 uh, CA-21-66 application A21-21AW and I will turn it over to Amanda. that you can see my uh, presentation. Yes, Melissa, you can see it? We got you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Yes. Schmidt. All right, so thank you through the chair. An application for relief to the zoning bylaw has been received from J.H. Cahoon Engineering on behalf of Prime Tech Precision, Inc. Uh, the subject lands are located on the east side of Middletown Lane Road in northeast of the third concession in Middle Town Line Road intersection. Subject lands are irregular in shape and have an area of approximately 7.6 hectares and a frontage of approximately 231 meters along Middle Town Line Road. And then in regards to the proposal, the applicant is seeking relief from section 11.2, table 11.2, in regards to maximum building height for a building on land zoned heavy industrial M3 uh, the applicant is seeking a maximum building height of, a, uh, sorry, a maximum building height of 18.5 meters, whereas a maximum height of 12 meters is permitted. It's my understanding the variance is being sought in order to facilitate the use of a bucket elevator within the proposed structure. And then in regards to the official plan, the subject lands are designated in employment and are located within site specific policy area 16. And then based on policies within the official plan, 
the intent of the employment designation is for lands to be developed for light, heavy, and prestige industrial uses, which include limited service commercial uses and related uses. And then in regards to the zoning bylaw, the subject lands are zoned as holding, heavy industrial. Uh, the, the applicant sought the variance for height in order to facilitate the use of the bucket elevator. Um, as a result of the increased height, the zoning bylaw requires increased street and interior side yard setbacks to reduce impacts on surrounding properties. And then based on the site plan provided, it appears the applicant is able to accommodate the increased setbacks. I do note that prior to construction and building permits being issued, the applicant would need to rezone the property to lift the holding. And then in regards to my recommendation, I am recommending approval to the approval subject to the conditions included in my report. These conditions speak to acknowledge, sorry, these conditions speak to acknowledging detailed drawings will be required through site plan control. It is my opinion the proposed variance meets the four tests of the Planning Act. One comment was received through public circulation which sought clarification on the proposed use of the structure and potential noise. This comment was provided to the agent who provides staff with a detailed response, which was provided to the resident as well. I'm happy to answer any commission, any questions the committee members may have. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, now I will turn it over to the applicant or the agent if they're present uh, to make any further comments, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Bob Phillips from Cahoon Engineering. On the call today is uh, both Derek and Gary uh, Haikoop, who are the, uh, the principals in Prime Tech. Uh, Amanda did a great explanation uh, regarding the application about the requirement for the additional height. Um, and the questions of the, the neighborhood, uh, we responded to as soon as we received them, uh, that the activities within this, uh, uh, or on this site are primarily indoors in nature. And uh, we uh, seek the committee's approval subject to the conditions. We recognize those are normal conditions uh, in this instance and uh, just be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Uh, any members have any questions for the applicant or staff on uh, this application? If not, I'm going to uh, turn it over to member Emmett. Moved by myself, seconded by member Schmidt, that application 821-21-AW from JH Cahoon Engineering on behalf of Prime Tech Precision Inc, owners of lands located at 238 Third Concession be approved as outlined in staff report CA 2161. Thank you, Member Emmett. Uh, I will now put the, uh, the motion uh, to, to the vote. And uh, if everybody could respond, please, uh, with what, Member Emmett? Yes. Member Zuloff? Yes. Mamus? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Hamilton, yes. The motion has been carried and the application has been approved. Thank you very much. All right, we're gonna go on to 6.4 uh, CA-21-56 application, A17-21-SL. And uh, I'm going to uh, turn this over to Shannon, but uh, first, I believe member Zuloff has reclused himself on this, uh, on this uh, application. Is that correct, member Zuloff? That's correct, yes. Go ahead, Shannon. To the chair. This is a minor variance for lands located at 19 Credence Street within the former town of Paris. The minor variance is for a decreased street setback of 0 0.66 meters, where 4.5 meters is permitted and for a decreased interior side yard setback of 0 0.11 meters to an uncovered platform structure, where 0 0.6 meters is permitted in order to facilitate the conversion of an existing dwelling from a non-residential use to residential use as a semi-detached dwelling. 
no exterior changes have been proposed. The subject lands are located on the south side of Creedon Street, north of Queen Street. The lands are surrounded by single detached dwellings in all directions. The application is consistent with the provincial policy statement and the growth plan for the Greater Golden Horseshoe. The subject lands are designated as urban residential within the County of Grant official plan. The minor variance is in conformity with the County of Grant official plan for the following reasons. The subject lands are within the primary urban settlement area and built boundary of Paris. The proposed variance is to facilitate the conversion of a non-residential use to a residential use, which is more compatible with the urban residential designation. The conversion will contribute to increased housing stock within the primary urban settlement area and built boundary of Paris. There's adequate parking for the proposed use and the subject lands are municipally urban. The subject lands are zoned as residential singles and semis, R2, within the County of France zoning bylaw. The applicant is seeking relief from section eight, table 8.2.1 and section 4.4 in order to recognize existing deficiencies to facilitate the conversion of a dwelling being previously used as a church to a semi-detached dwelling. The proposal is considered to be in keeping with the intent of the County of Grant zoning bylaw for the following reasons. A semi-detached dwelling is a permitted use. There is no new development being proposed. The variances are to recognize existing deficiencies and all other development criteria is being met aside from the street setback and interior side yard setback to an accessory structure. There is adequate parking provided and on-street parking is also provided. No public comments were received for this application. Staff are supportive of the minor variance application as it is consistent with the provincial policy statement, conforms to the growth plan for the Greater Golden Horseshoe, and meets the four tests as established by Section 451 of the Planning Act. The minor variance is considered to be minor in nature, appropriate and desirable for the development of the subject lands, and the request is in keeping with the general intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw and official plan. Staff is recommending the approval of the minor variance application subject to the attached conditions. Thank you, Shannon. Uh, is the applicant or agent uh, available and would like to make any comments? Uh, yes, my name is Ken Beekingham and I'm the, uh, the applicant for this um, proposal. Uh, I just want to thank uh, staff for their, uh, their help in getting us to this point. We've had um, uh, quite a bit of consultation with staff to develop these variances and uh, I'm in full support you know, of their report and um, and hope that committee will uh, um, approve it as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Beacon Dam. Uh, I will now put it to the uh, members. Uh, any questions for the applicant or staff on this application? If not, I will turn uh, this over to uh, Member Vamus. It's moved by myself and second by Member Embet that application A17-21-SL from Ken Beckendam on behalf of 2712007 Ontario Inc., owner of the lands located at 19 Creedon Street be approved as outlined in staff report CA-21-56. Thank you. Uh, we will now uh, put it to the vote. Uh, Member Emmett? Yes. Uh, Member Vamus? Yes. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. I think I just got kicked out. I'm. Uh, can everybody hear me? Am I back on or not? Yes, you are. Okay, thank you. Uh, Member Schmidt? Yes. Member Hamilton? Yes. Uh, the motion has been carried. The application uh, has been approved. Thank you. 
Now going on to 6.5. Uh, 52 application B 33-21 RC. Um, I will now turn it over to uh, Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the subject lands are located on the north side of Oak Hill Drive, west of Jennings Road within the former township of Brantford. Subject lands known as 177 Oak Hill Drive currently have a frontage of approximately 66.9 meters, an area of approximately 2.14 hectares. <clears throat> Receiving lands known as three Blythewood Heights have a frontage of approximately 190 meters, an area of approximately 2.1 hectares. The applicant is proposing a lot line adjustment with approximately one hectare being severed from the rear of 177 Oak Hill Drive to be added to the lands known as Three Blythewood Heights, uh, which abuts to the, to the east. The intent of the application is to increase the size of the land holdings of the lands known as Three Blythewood Heights, as the owner is, desi is desirous of maintaining their own private and protected uh, woodlot and natural heritage lands. Uh, the owner of 177 Oak Hill Drive has indicated that these lands are surplus to their needs and therefore are proposing to convey the lands to the abutting uh, neighbor. No new building lots will be created as a result of this application. Based on the analysis contained in the report, staff are recommending that this application be approved subject to the attached conditions. Uh, this concludes my remarks, thank you. Thank you, Ryan. I just got kicked out again. Sorry. Thank you, Ryan. Um, is there uh, the agent or applicant uh, want to make any further comments? Yes, thank you very much. My name is Eldon Darbison. I'm with G. Douglas Valley Limited in Simcoe and representing uh, our clients this evening. Uh, we've reviewed the report and we agree with uh, its content and the conditions. Uh, I just want to thank staff for work with us. Thank you. Back over to you, Bob. Uh, yeah, I'm I getting kicked out of here. I don't know. Maybe it's the storm coming. Can I call in Kayla and uh, do it that way? You sure can. Do you have the call in number handy? No, I don't. I okay. will give it to you. Okay, thank you, Lisa. Do you want me to put it in the chat or do you want me to just give it to you? No, just give it to me. I'm not into the chat. I'm trying to do too many things here anyways. <laughs> All right, our dial in is, do we do the tap mobile or dial by your location? Okay, 1647. 1647. Three seven four. Three seven four. Four six eight five. Four six eight five. All right. I I apologize, everybody. I'm going to uh, try and call this in, and uh, and then if somebody can make a connection there at the county level, I'll just stay on the phone. I'll make sure I let you in.
What? What's the meeting ID, Elisa? Oh, um, it's eight two four. Eight two four. Okay. And there, it's a long number. I'll keep going. Eight two four. Six eight five eight. Six eight five eight. Four zero seven seven. Four zero seven seven. And then they'll want a passcode. Okay, which is? Zero seven. One five. Yes. Two zero two one. Okay. It looks like my thing's back up here now. I don't know. I'm I'm not getting into it. I don't think there, Lisa. Well, I can hear you fine over yeah. the uh, call. On the call? Yeah. Not okay. the phone, but where you're. Yeah. You're All right. Yeah, it's on the computer here. Yeah, it keeps fading in and out. I think it's because of the storm that's coming. So, uh, we will carry on. Uh, bring me up to speed. Uh, the applicant um we're just ready to do the motion okay uh then uh with that i will turn it over to member schmidt please thank you chair um moved by myself and seconded by member zuloff that application b33-21-rc from gd valley and associates 8133 agent on behalf of brian hatchie owner of 177 Oak Hill Drive, former township of Brantford, be approved as outlined in staff report CA-21-52. Thank you, Member Schmidt. Now I'll put it to uh, the vote. Uh, Member Emmett? Yes. Member Zuloff? Yes. Member Vamus? Yes. Member Schmidt? Yes. Member Hamilton, yes. Uh, the motion has been passed and the application as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Moving on to 6-7 CA-21-54 application B34, B35, B36 and B37 SL uh, 21 SL. Uh, I'll turn this now over to Shannon, please. Um, we are actually on item 6.6 .6, B3821. I am sorry. Okay. Yes. On, on uh, 65 Brent road. Yeah. I got ahead of myself there. And so we'll go ahead, Shannon. Great, thank you. Through the chair, this is a severance for lands located at 65 Brant Road in the former town of South Dumfries. This is to sever a dwelling deemed surplus with a frontage of approximately 70.8 meters in an area of 1.6 acres. The retained lands have an area of approximately 136 hectares. These subject lands are located on the west side of Brant Road having frontage along the west side of Brant Road. The subject property is surrounded by agricultural lands and related uses in all directions. The application is consistent with the uh, provincial policy statement and the growth plan for the Greater Golden Horseshoe. The subject lands are designated agriculture and natural heritage in the County of Brant official plan. I would like to note that the lands being severed are designated as agriculture. The proposed severance is in conformity with the County of Brant official plan for the following reasons. Through the severance, no new residential building lots are being created. The retained lands are expected to be farmed as part of a larger farming operation located at 660 Governors Road East. The severed and retained parcels have frontage along Grant Road, and the severed, par severed parcel is large enough to accommodate private servicing. 
These subject lands are zoned as agriculture, A, and natural heritage, and H, within the County of Grant zoning bylaw. The application complies with the County of Grant zoning bylaw as the severed and retained lot satisfied all development provisions and criteria. No public comments were received for this application, and to facilitate the severance, the applicants will be required to apply for a minor rezoning to prohibit a residential use on the retained parcel. This has been included as a condition of approval. Staff are supportive of the consent application as it, as it is consistent with the provincial policy statement, conforms to the growth plan for the Greater Golden Horseshoe, is in conformity with the County of Grant official plan, and complies with the County of Grant zoning bylaw. And therefore, staff recommend approval of the application subject to the attached conditions. I would like to note that for condition three, particularly the uh, second bullet, no permit through the Ministry of Transportation will be required if the drive shed is removed. I was advised that the owner has decided to remove uh, the drive shed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon. Uh, is the uh, applicant or agent present and would they like to make any comments? Yeah, Hi. Chris, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Chris, if you'd like to speak. Uh, yeah, it's just Chris Martin here. I'm the owner. And um, yeah, everything is as uh, she laid out there. And I, I really don't have anything else to add. Thank you. And my name is Kate Wills. I'm from MHBC representing the applicant on this uh, application this evening. We just want to uh, thank the county for their report. Uh, we appreciate their recommendations and we have also reviewed uh, the conditions of the approval and agree with the change to uh, number three, bullet point number two, as the uh, drive shed will be removed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I now will put it to uh, the members. Uh, do they have any questions for this application? Uh, before we put it to the vote. <coughs> I see that there is uh, no comment, so I will now turn it over to uh, Member Emmett. Moved by myself and seconded by Member Schmidt that application 3821 SL from Trevor Hawkins, applicant on behalf of 1778206 Ontario Inc. Owners of the lands located at 65 Brant Road, former township of South Dumfries, be approved as outlined in staff report CA 2150. Thank you, Member Emmett. Now I will, uh, would the members please indicate if you're in favor of this motion. Mr. Member Emmett? Yes. Member Zuloff? Yes. Vamus? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Hamilton? Yes. Uh, the uh, application has been, uh, the motion has passed and the application uh, has been, been approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, now that we'll, now I'll, I'll get caught up here. Uh, we'll go on to uh, 6.7 uh, CA-2154 application. B3435, B36, B37 21SL, and I turn it over to Shannon. And I do apologize for jumping ahead there, Shannon. No problem at all. Through the chair, this is a severance for lands located at 6th Concession and Highway number 53 in the former township of Hereford. The consent application is proposing the creation of four, of four new residential lots. Uh, severed lands one have an approximate frontage of 38.2 meters and an area of 2,750 square meters. Severed lands two have a frontage of approximately 37 meters and an area of 2,750 square meters. Severed lands three and four have an approximate frontage of 30 meters and an area of 2,750 square meters each. The subject lands are located within the Hamlet boundary of Cathcart um, and having frontage along the south side of Highway 53 and frontage along the north side of 6th Concession Road. To the north of the subject property, there are agricultural lands and low density residential single detached dwellings 
To the east and south, there is low density residential single detached dwellings. And to the west, there are agricultural lands. The application is consistent with the provincial policy statement and the growth plan for the Greater Golden Horseshoe. The subject lands are designated as hamlets and villages within the County of Grant official plan. The proposed severances are in conformity with the County of Grant official plan for the following reasons. The subject lands are located within the hamlet boundary of Cathcart. The proposed severance meets the official plan criteria for infill and development. The proposed severances consider and are consistent with existing lots within the hamlet, hamlets and villages designation. And the subject lands have frontages along a public road. The subject lands are zoned as residential hamlets and villages with a special exception, RH-25, within the County of Grant zoning bylaw. This consent application is in follow-up to an approved zoning bylaw amendment application, ZBA-30-20-DN, which permits a minimum frontage of 30 meters along 6th Concession Road and Highway number 53, and a minimum lot area of 2,750 square meters. The development provisions and criteria for the RH25 zone um, are being met. No public comments were received for this application and staff are supportive of the consent application as it is consistent with the provincial policy statement, conforms to the growth plan for the Greater Golden Horseshoe, is in conform conformity with the County of Grant official plan and complies with the County of Grant zoning bylaw and therefore staff recommend approval of the application subject to the attached conditions. And there are four separate conditions for each parcel. Thank you, Shannon, for that presentation. Thank you. Uh, now, if the applicant or agent is available and would like to make some comments, uh, please do so at this time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, Bob Phillips from Cahoon Engineering. Uh, I'd like to thank Shannon for the detailed report that you received. We are fully supportive of all the recommendations and the conditions and uh, I think it's a straightforward application. It's an application that was before council for uh, zoning and we're just following through on, on the proposal that was presented to them. I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. Uh, any members uh, have any questions for the applicant or staff on this, this application? Seems not. I do have one I'd just like to put to staff, and it's on uh, uh, lot three and four uh, under 21. Uh, I do believe that we've got extra information there coming out to Highway 53 that's not needed on on that. It's, it's more of a housekeeping thing, possibly, or is it should it be left in there is my uh, question to staff. Uh, through the chair to um, the committee, if uh, you'd like, we could also just add the wording if required uh, to those um, conditions and that can be included in the decision and then it will be um, at staff's discretion. Thank you. I'm just curious, uh, why would we have uh, a condition on a lot that doesn't touch uh, Highway 53? It's more... I guess I got, I just can't understand why we would have that in there. Yeah, through the chair, it's probably just um, from the, uh, the lots to the north. So we'll add those uh, if required and then that gives us some flexibility. All right then, thank you very much. Any other questions? If not, I will turn it over to member Zuloff. <clears throat> uh, moved by myself and seconded by member Emmett that consent application B34-3721 SL from JH Cahoon Engineering on behalf of 571245 Ontario Limited, owners of a concession five part five lot 17, former township of Burford be approved as outlined in staff report CA 2154 um, with the amendments that uh, Shannon uh, mentioned. Thank you, Member Zuloff. Uh, now I will uh, turn it over to each uh, member to vote on the motion that's put forward. Member Emmett? Yes. 
Zuloff? Yes. Namus? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Hamilton? Yes. The application, uh, the motion has passed and the application uh, has been approved for, for this, uh, this one here. Thank you very much. You're welcome. We will now go on to 6.8 application or uh, CA 21 45 application B 30 21 AW Shermandale Farms uh, Limited. Uh, Elisa, have they uh, made it on the uh, call or not? Yes, they're here. Thank you. Uh, and I will now turn it over to Amanda. Uh, can I just get someone to confirm you can see my presentation just because we can see it this way. Perfect. All right. So thank you to the chair. An application for severance has been received from Shermandale Farms for the lands municipally known as 178 Newport Road. The subject lands are located on the east side of Newport Road and south of the old Greenfield Road and Newport Road intersection. The subject lands are irregular in shape with an area of approximately 79.3 hectares and a frontage of approximately 1,486 meters. In regards to the proposal, the applicant is proposing to seek, sorry, the applicant is seeking to sever a surplus dwelling with an area of approximately 1.3 hectares and the retained lands are expected to have an area of approximately 78 hectares. The several, severed parcel is expected to have an extract accessory structure area of approximately 810 square meters, which will need to be recognized through a rezoning application. The applicants applied for a pre-consultation meeting where I was originally not in support of the application due to the size of the proposal and the number of, the, number of structures on the severed parcel. Through the pre-consultation and a subsequent site visit, the applicant and staff worked together to find a solution which is being presented to the committee for recommendation. And then in regards to the official plan, the subject lands are designated as agricultural and natural heritage, with the portion being severed designated as agricultural. The County of Brand official plan does contemplate for surplus dwelling sever severances, subject to a number of criteria, including all services being contained on the severed, minimum frontage, and no new residential being, res sorry, no new residential building lots being created. And then in regards to my recommendation, I am in support of the application as it main, maintains the intent of the official plan and zoning. I'm recommending approval of the application subject to the conditions noted in my report, which include rezoning the severed parcel to recognize the accessory structure area and the retained parcel to prohibit a dwelling. I'm happy to answer any questions the committee members may have. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, now, would the uh, applicant or an agent uh, like to make any comments, uh, further comments on this application? Uh, we don't have any comments. Sorry, Maddie from Shermandale. Um, Amanda did a great presentation. Um, we're very grateful that she came out, and did a site visit with her staff, and uh, hopefully this gets approved and we can keep moving forward. All right, then. Thank you. I will uh, now put it to the members if they have any questions for the applicant or staff on this application. Member Emmett here, just to uh, for clarification, I believe I see it on the uh, site plan, but there's still a roughly a 20 meter uh, parcel connecting the two sort of lots or the retained lots, the, the piece to the north to the larger piece to the south. Yeah, thank you through the chair. Um, I can confirm that there is sufficient room between behind the severed lands and there's enough room for um, large machinery to, to traverse that area and go behind. Uh, you are correct, it's approximately 20 meters based off of the site plan and the, sur the survey that was submitted. Thank you. Any other questions uh, about this application? Um, I've got one I just want to put uh, forward that there was some discussion earlier about the uh, barns three and four being decommissioned or, or, or taken down, but it's not a condition in the, uh, uh, in the list of conditions there. Uh, just wanting to know what 
uh, staff and the uh, applicant had come to uh, from that perspective. Uh, thank you to the chair. The conditions in, in the report re reference um, rezoning the separate parcel to approximately 810 square meters for access accessory structure. So that number is calculated based off of um, barn one, barn two, uh, the detached garage, and then the shop at the rear of the property. Um, should the committee see fit if they want to include specific wording that speaks to barns three and four being removed, the committee can do that as an additional condition should you see fit. Thank you, Amanda. No, it was just a, we, there was some discussion on it and I just wanted to know exactly what had been agreed to uh, for the barn three and four. So um, I will leave it up to uh, member Emmett if he wants to add that condition or go with what has been put forward. Thank you, Chairman Bob. Uh, moved by myself and second member of Amos that consent application B3021 SL from Shermandale Farms Limited, owners of 178 Newport Road, former township of Brantford, be approved with the added removal of barn three and four, as outlined in staff report CA21 and 45. Thank you, member Emmett. Uh, I will uh, put the amended uh, uh, motion uh, forward uh, to uh, all the members uh, for, for uh, who's in favor, Member Emmett? Yes. Zuloff? Yes. Bamus? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Hamilton? Yes. The uh, motion has been passed and the application has been approved. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Now moving on to 6.9, uh, CA-21-53, application B32-21 SL. Uh, I will now uh, turn this over to uh, uh, Kayla. Thank you. Through the chair, uh, good evening Committee of Adjustment and members of the public. This is a consent application, which is proposing to sever lands located at 214 Brant Church Road. Uh, the parcel to be severed um, is on the east side of Brant Church with a frontage of 70.8 meters and an approximate area of 1.8 acres um, and does contain the existing dwelling that is deemed surplus to their needs. Uh, the planning uh, analysis has focused on the applicable policies from the provincial policy statement, the growth plan, the county of Brant official plan, and the zoning bylaw. Um, no uh, input from the public has been received on this application, and planning staff are recommending approval subject to the attached conditions. Thank you. Thank you, Kayla. Uh, is the uh, applicant or agent present that would like to make any further comments? Maria Kinkle here, um, agent um, with MHN Lawyers for the Strix. And I have nothing to add. I've reviewed the report and found it satisfactory from staff. All right, then. Thank you very much. I will now uh, put it to the uh, members if they have any questions on this application, uh, either to the uh, applicant or to staff. If there's no comments or questions uh, coming forward, I will now turn it over to member Schmidt. Thank you, chair. Um, it is moved by myself and seconded by member Emmett that consent or the consent application B32 21 SL from MHN Lawyers LLP applicant on behalf of Catherine and Michael Strick, owner of 214 Brant Church Road, former township of Brantford, County of Brant, be approved as outlined in staff report CA 21 53. Thank you, Member Schmidt. I will now uh, 
ask uh, members to indicate if they're in favor of this motion. Member Emmett? Yes. Zuloff? Yes. Vamus? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Hamilton is yes. The motion has been passed and the application has been approved. Thank you. You're welcome. We're going to move on to now 6, uh, 6.10 6 uh, CA-21-60 application B43-21 dash AW and I will turn it over to Amanda. Uh, through the chair, an application for severance has been received from Christine Calico on behalf of MC Masonry and General Reconstruction LTD, sorry, General Construction LTD for the lands municipally known as 145 Industrial Boulevard. The subject lands are located on the west side of Industrial Boulevard, south of Industrial Boulevard, Boulevard and Highway 5 intersection and are located within St. George. The subject lands are rectangular in shape and have an area of approximately two hectares. And then in regards to the proposal, the applicant is seeking to sever an area of approximately 2,779 square meters with a frontage of approximately 80.5 meters along Industrial Boulevard in order to facilitate the construction of a warehouse on a separate parcel from their business. The retained lands are expected to have an area of approximately um, 17,503 square meters with a broken frontage of approximately 98.6 meters along Industrial Boulevard. Through discussions with staff in the GRCA, the applicant prepared an EIS to determine where the developable area is in relation to the natural heritage features. Both the GRCA and the county's environmental planner have reviewed the EIS and are not opposed to the severance with the specific conditions included in a future rezoning. And then in regards to the official plan, the subject lands are designated as employment and natural heritage. The intent of the employment designation is for lands to be developed for light, heavy, and in prestige industrial uses, limited service commercial uses, and related uses, which include warehouses. And then in regards to the zoning, the subject lands are currently zoned as natural heritage and heavy industrial with site-specific provision seven, which permits a dwelling as a permitted use. As a condition of severance approval, the applicant will be required to remove a dwelling as a permitted use. Uh, staff have had discussions with the agents and they are aware of this condition. And then in regards to my recommendation, I'm recommending approval of this application subject to the conditions included in my report, which include rezoning to remove the site specific provision on the severed and the retained, and that the re recommendations of the environmental impact study are implemented through the rezoning application as well. I'm happy to answer any questions the committee members may have. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, now we'll ask if the applicant or agent is present that would like to make any further comments on this application. Hi, I'm Christine Caracano on behalf of MC Masonry. I think Amanda has uh, presented it quite well on our behalf. Okay, then we'll leave it like that. And I will uh, put it to uh, members if they have any questions from either staff or the applicant on this application. Seeing that there's no uh, comments or questions coming forward, I will turn it over to member Schmidt. Thank you, chair. Um, it is moved by myself and seconded by member Zuloff that consent B43 slash 21 slash AW from Christine Kelko uh, on behalf of MC Masonry and General Construction Limited, owners of 145 Industrial Boulevard, be approved as outlined in staff report CA-21-60. Thank you, Member Schmidt. I will now uh, put the motion uh, to the vote. Uh, Member Emmett. Yes. Zuloff? Yes. Famous? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Hamilton? Yes. The motion has uh, been approved and the application also has been approved. Uh, with that, uh, we'll get ready to uh, carry on.
to other business. Thank you. You're welcome. There's no other business at this time. Uh, the next meeting is expected to be on September the 16th, 2021. Staff note that there will be a, a recess during the month of August. Uh, Elisa, can you just confirm that, please? Yeah, I just wanted to confirm that our wonderful secretary treasurer, her name is Alyssa. Alyssa, I'm sorry. That's okay. And we will see you all again on September 16th. Thanks, Kayla. Yeah, and just to confirm uh, the Cathcart severances, all right. we will adjust. I will, uh... Oh, I'm sorry, I just wanted to confirm. I was spoke, speaking with Shannon and we will um, adjust the uh, condition in the Cathcart decisions before they go out. All right. Uh... I'm looking for a motion to adjourn and I uh, will turn just, it over just, to. Member Emmett here, just before you adjourn. Yes. I know I'm a little old fashioned and I still prefer in-person meetings rather than these electronic Zoom meetings. I, I note that you've had trouble with yours. I've had trouble with my internet in the past. And I think if, if we keep improving with this uh, stage three or four or whatever we are, Maybe we could meet in person, even if it's two groups in a county building someplace. I believe the county has lots of buildings that can sit five or six people significantly spaced if we have to. I'm a strong believer of that, but anyway. Thank uh, you, Member Emmett. I, I'm in agreement with you, especially, and I apologize to everybody for uh, what's happening uh, on mine. I've been good in the past, but tonight I don't know if that storm's coming out of the south is what's causing it or not but yes I would prefer uh in person uh even at smaller groups uh at, that's my input on that so uh I'll turn it over to member Zuloff uh for adjournment motion to move by myself and second by member Ammon to adjourn all right I declare the meeting adjourned I thank